story about the CIA inventing the AIDS virus. And there's one still making the rounds in South America about children being murdered for their vital organs. Both are examples of disinformation. And tonight you're going to meet a master at it. A man who made his name in the days when the communists ruled Eastern Europe. As Dennis Murphy tells us, times have changed and so has he. Larry Bittman, a Saturday Sunday skipper in Rockport, Mass, a weekend warrior. Larry Bittman, AKA Larry Martin. AKA Ladislav Bittman, one time Cold Warrior, master spy for the other side. I openly admit I did a lot of damage to the West, particularly to the United States, as a specialist for dirty tricks. Retrace Larry Bittman's steps through Central Europe and you follow the trail of the superpower's most secret battles. Only now are there spy stories being heard. As a major in the Czech intelligence service, Bittman ran undercover agents and created disinformation campaigns aimed at hurting the U.S. image abroad. Czech intelligence was the second most powerful spy ring in the communist world, surpassed only by the Soviet KGB. It was new, it was... Uh adventurous, it was something for the benefit of the revolution with capital R. As a newly minted spy in the east-west chill of the 50s, he bumbled his first assignment. Contact an agent in an Austrian railway station, the man wearing the mustard green suit. As the meeting hour arrived, there were two dozen men in the traditional green suits. I approached the first man and I said, you know, use that uh, secret formula saying something like, did we meet uh, last year in Salzburg? And he was supposed to answer with, uh, you know, certain words. He didn't. He looked at me, turned around and, and left. Then I went to the next one again and nothing. Then the third, then the fourth. Then I forgot the first one. They, I reapproached them again, you know, and it was a total chaos. Larry, this didn't happen in the movies of the Cold War. And uh, he was <laughs> Bond. James Bond. While writer Ian Fleming was creating this enduring fantasy of what a spy's life was all about, Larry Bittman was refining less glamorous skills. Bittman's first foreign posting was the most important a spy could ask for, Berlin. It was 1961, and right here at Checkpoint Charlie, East and West had fallen into the deepest freeze of the Cold War, glaring eyeball to eyeball across a wall. And Larry Bittman was in the front lines. Bittman's assignment, recruit and run undercover agents. He says communist bloc agents secretly controlled as many as 15 members of the West German parliament. They learned virtually all of NATO's secret battle plans. Secrets passed on immediately to the Soviet KGB. You're a fisherman. How did you get these fish on the line? The intelligence service collects all available information about the individual, his family, his... Uh, problems, his financial situation, his uh, adva sexual adventures, his, his sexual inclinations, uh, anything and everything to find the right approach for recruitment. Was it common to use women to entrap an interesting subject? Oh yeah, any time when it, it, it was clear that the individual uh, would buy the bait, uh, sure, women were used, yes. Compromising photos and... That's right, yes. Bittman says the Russians took a Czech intelligence idea and set up a bordello in Bonn, the West German capital. Hidden spy cameras caught West German politicians in the act. The KGB and other communist intelligence services were quite successful in recruiting agents. They knew how to play on weaknesses and strengths of individuals. Standing, facing each other, right at the midfield line. Mm -hmm. KGB, the CIA. Yes. Which was a better team? It was 50-50. In that death grip of East-West, Bittman carved out a specialty. Manufacturing and distributing big lies about the other side. Disinformation. It was a very important part of the Cold War. It's like public relations in reverse. Instead of promoting something, you are destroying it. In the mid-60s, Czech intelligence duped a TV documentary team. They sunk chests of captured Nazi papers in the lake.
When the divers brought the chests up, Bittman's spies claimed they'd found inside a list of names, Nazis currently working as spies for the West German government. When the so-called list was reported, it threw a major wrench in the West German spy network. And there were other disinformation scams. Czechs published a book falsely naming some U.S. diplomats as CIA agents, severely damaging their credibility. And they created false documents detailing U.S. conspiracies around the world by forging American diplomat signatures taken from Christmas cards sent to the Czech government. There was the basic assumption behind this massive production of disinformation that eventually this will have serious visible impact on public opinion in the West. Bittman's reward for a job well done was another prime foreign posting. Vienna, the city of Strudel and a Baroque lost empire. Spies meeting in hasty exchanges, secrets passing into the privacy of a small elevator. He would give me an undeveloped film into my hand, and then I would walk in one direction and he would walk into the opposite direction. But it was cloak and dagger work that felt more hollow with every passing year. Bittman's doubts had been building ever since he heard a young president's speech at the Berlin Wall. As a free man, I take pride in the word, Ich bin ein Berliner. I kind of, I have the feeling that I'm standing at the wrong side of the barricade. When the Berlin Wall went up, Larry, why didn't you say, I've had enough of this? And go back to Prague, you could have been a school teacher, you could still have been any number of things. I was not ready for this kind of move. And in a communist country, you cannot come and say, comrades, I'm sick and tired of this dirty business. Ciao, I'm going to <laughs> go into teaching. <laughs> no way. You, you would go directly to prison, you know. What Bittman calls his growing cynicism was tested even more by the events of the spring and summer of 1968. Czech experiments at loosening Russian control were snuffed out that day in August when the Soviet tanks rolled into Prague. That was uh, the ultimate political shock of my life. Uh, this was the moment of truth when I, it was impossible to fool myself and say, justify anything that I did in the past, because from that moment on, if I would continue, I would be helping the invader. Larry Bittman's life as a spy was over. He drove to the border and crossed over into West Germany. Much of his family remained behind in Czechoslovakia. At that moment, I knew that I would never see my, my father, my brother, he had entered the twilight world of the defector, one of the first Czech spies to bolt. Old friends became deadly enemies. I mean, when I was a young intelligence officer, he was a person we were taught to hate. Vaclav Geikel was also a Czech spy. You were told to hate him? Of course. Not only to hate him, to kill him if you meet him. I expected that I would be hunted uh, and that eventually they would try either to kidnap me or to assassinate me. Hidden in secure safe houses, Bittman was debriefed by the CIA for the next year. Did you ever think I'm betraying my country? No, not for a second. I thought that I was betraying my country. Uh, I was leaving behind my uh, ideological naivete or stupidity did you tell the CIA everything you knew? Absolutely everything. Larry Bittman is one of the most noble men of the Cold War. Many of the precise details of what he told U.S. intelligence are still classified secrets. But Mark Wyatt, a former high-ranking CIA official, regards Bittman as one of the West's best blue-chip assets. Bittman filled in the blanks on the Communist bloc's worldwide disinformation campaign. Did Larry Bittman and other men and women whose names we don't even know make a difference in bringing about the end of the Cold War? Very much so. Very much so. Come here. So the life of the Cold War spy may never have been as glamorous as the James Bond movies would have us believe. Ahoy, Mr. Bond. Ahoy, Mr. Bond. But at least one agent came in from the cold and found the American woman of his dreams. And something else. 
the understanding that the words life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness really aren't just so much Washington disinformation. When he's not on his boat these days, Larry Bittman is at the helm in the classroom. He's a professor at Boston University, where, among other things, he teaches aspiring journalists about the dangers of disinformation. Still ahead, this is not a blind man, but he plays one on TV. You're a